Hey guys, welcome to Unleash Podcast, brought to you by Hidden Gene, where we talk about how to unleash your hidden potential. I'm your host, Yuri Diogenes, and we have a great episode for you today, featuring Samantha Elliott. Samantha, thanks for being on today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, before we jump into these topics, we would like to invite you to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Uh, you can also visit our uh, webpage, hiddenchain.net, uh, and access all the episodes there. And if you live in the area and you have not been at Hidden Gin, make sure to visit our website, hiddenchain.net, and get a free trial pass. All right, Samantha, um, Greg told me a lot about you. So why don't you give a, a brief ex uh, overview about... Um, what you've been doing these days, uh, how was uh, this journey to, to the victory of the Miss Illinois? That's quite amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so I graduated from college in December from the University of Kansas, and I've been studying for my CPA since then. So not only am I studying for my CPA, I was also prepping for a state competition, which was a lot to handle, but uh, I was crowned actually four weeks ago to this day. Very exciting. And now I'm Miss Illinois USA, which prepares me to compete at Miss USA this fall. Wow, that's so we get amazing. To prep all over again. <laughs> <laughs> now, leading to this prep, uh, what was probably the, the most difficult part for you? It was uh, balancing the study and the prep uh, or you've been into fitness for a long time that it was just you know business as usual it was not business as usual for me i was not the most fit person in college so i actually spent a year and a half getting back into fitness i was a former athlete and i went to college didn't have sports anymore to motivate me so i didn't have the fitness discipline that i needed so i started working with greg about a year and a half ago um, just getting back into working out, eating right, and it's really hard to build those habits back up. I will say that was probably the biggest thing I struggled with was building my habits back up and staying disciplined. And then once I got into a routine of it closer to competition, you know, it got easier, but it was still waking up every day thinking, okay, just give it what I can today and stay disciplined. Okay. Because... Um... This type of uh, contest is not as the same as bodybuilding contests and things like that. So what it really is the focus? Because you, you don't want to get muscular, you don't want to get too big, you, you want to get in shape. So what is really what you're looking for? So the beauty about pageants is that healthy looks different for everybody. I know with bodybuilding, they want you to have a specific look. But for pageants, it's really, are you healthy do you work out are you fit obviously with that comes is your body fat percentage low enough that you look really fit on stage um so they don't want you to be just skinny they want you to have muscle with it and you know that's something i had to work on was building up muscle but also dropping my body fat percentage down um and just being the healthiest that i could be for me and how long it took you to prep for this contest? Like, uh, the, uh, like usually people start twelve months out, sixteen months out. I mean, sixteen weeks. Sorry, sixteen weeks out, fourteen weeks out. Uh, for you, how many weeks out did you start? Uh, my main focus was about twelve weeks out. Is where I was really on top of it. Um, I got, like I said, I started building my habits a year and a half out about getting my nutrition back in order and getting my workouts going again. And then five months out from competition is where I was like, okay, we really need to clean it up now, make sure we're a little bit more focused. And then when that 12 weeks hit, fitness was my focus. And so that's that 12 weeks was really grind time for me. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you say that uh, you start one year uh, pri prior to the, the true prep, what was the biggest change? Did you have to lose weight? Were you not feeling well with your body uh, and you started losing weight? Or was mo not so much of losing weight, it was more getting fit? It was mainly building, back up, building muscle back up. Mm -hmm. um, I was an athlete in high school, but you know, that was four years ago. 
So I needed to build that muscle back up that I had lost from, you know, not working out, not taking care of myself in college. Um, So my main focus when I first started was just slow and steady, building the muscle, and then slowly dropping my fat down to make sure it was healthy, sustainable. And how much cardio did you do? Did you do a lot of cardio or not not really? (laughs) My main cardio didn't really hit until the 12 weeks, if I'm being completely honest. (laughs) Um, I did enough to keep me active because you spend so many hours a day studying or sitting in lectures. You're not really an active person. Um, so probably only like 20 minutes of cardio, like four or five times a week. And then once it hit focus, I was doing cardio like six times a week. Um, but that's just because I'm not a very, <laughs> very active when you sit at a computer all day studying. Yeah, but what, what type of cardio? Running, stairs, or did you do any hit type of cardio? I just walked. I just I just walk on the treadmill, sit it at an incline, watch my heart rate to make sure my heart rate's where wherever Greg tells me it should be at. And then I just walk and make sure my heart rate's in that area. And sometimes you'll see me studying flashcards as I walk and that's just what worked best for me. That's that's great. That's great. Some people need really to push on cardio. Looks like it was not your case. Just just by walking you were able to get what you needed, right? Yeah, just by walking at an incline, that's all it was for me. Now, when it comes to nutrition, was it a challenge to to get everything uh, in place? So, one thing I told Greg right away when we started working together is that I didn't want to count my calories. I didn't want to look at my macros. I did not have the time or the energy for that because I am an accountant. So, I stress over every little number and I didn't need to be doing that with my nutrition. It wasn't going to be good for my mental health or my sustainability. So with Greg, he told me, you know, here's what you eat. Here's the portions you eat it. Just eat it. And for me, that worked out the best, having someone to tell me what to eat, when to eat it. And I just did it, and we were good to go. Do you have an idea, uh, since you didn't want to know the numbers uh, or worry about that, what the percentage was when it comes to protein, carbohydrate, or you didn't even care about looking at this? I, for the sake of my mental health, I didn't even want to look at it. I would assume, like, protein-wise would be about my body weight, so about 150 is what I was having in protein. Um, And then, you know, as we were cutting, obviously my carbs were cutting, my fats were going down, um, but that protein always stayed consistent, no matter where I was in my prep. And you were doing six meals a day, or less than that? Oh, what was I at? Um, I had five meals a day. I had three meals and like two snacks. Mm-hmm. Good. And, and did you feel a lot of change when the, um, you were in the final weeks of the prep as far as the depletion of carbohydrate? Did you do? Because sometimes it affects your, your mental uh, state, mainly for you that are studying a lot. Uh, did you feel anything? I definitely, you definitely feel it. No matter who you are, you definitely feel the depletion Um, because I also live on a farm. So I'm doing farm work morning and night while doing this cut. Um, So yeah, I felt it doing my farm work. You know, it took me a little bit longer to get through it, but we still got through it. And, you know, it's only that short amount of time that you push yourself. And then at the end, you see the reward of all the hard work that you put in. Yeah, it's always work for sure. Now t- tell a little bit more about this farm work. What, what is that? Yeah, so I live on a goat and horse farm. Nobody expects me to say that, I know. <laughs> so, you know, you're walking around in winter time when I was really starting to get in prep mode. You know, the wa- I, I live in northern Illinois. Winters are really harsh. So you're bundled up in layers and layers of warm clothes. And then the water freezes. So you have to carry five-gallon buckets of water, you know, one in each hand, multiple trips back and forth. So, you know, you're carrying heavy stuff doing farm work, five-gallon buckets of feed to feed these animals morning and night. So, you know, that's that's a workout in itself. Yes, <laughs> it is. Did you... Uh, try to wear a, 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 a heart monitor just to, to track your the amount of calories that you were burning just by doing that. Oh, I didn't really, I didn't really track it exactly. I can't say I have. Um, but let's just say, like, when you're when it's cold outside and you're taking your warm clothes off and you can feel yourself sweating, you know it was good workout. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and so this is like a family business. 
Oh, it's just a hobby farm, actually. My brother and I started goat showing almost 15 years ago. And it's just something we've kept around and kept doing. Um, my parents both grew up on farms, but um, no, it was just a hobby for me and my brother to have to keep us active, keep us outside and, you know, build up our work ethic really is what it did for us. So is it worse on, during the winter or summer? Because I, it, does it get really hot on summer too, on that area? I don't think so, does it? No, it does. It still gets like 100 degrees outside and then the humidity hits. So, you know, Illinois is not the place to live sometimes. <laughs> The winters, the winters can get really tough and really cold, and then the summers can get really hot, really humid. Um, and we actually just had a huge storm go through last night, and you know, I was doing chores last night, and I felt the humidity while I was out there. And you know, you still got to be in work clothes, so they're still thick blue jeans and thick shirts, so that you know, you're safe on the farm. <laughs> and how many months are you uh, from the Miss USA? It's uh, two months, three months from now. Um, there's no set location or date yet. They don't usually announce it till about five to six weeks out. Our best guess is that it's in October. So looking at like possibly three, three and a half months out now. So are you just uh, keeping the same program uh, for now or are you alleviating a little bit and then you're going to change uh, when it gets closer or, or at least when they announce? Yeah. So we alleviated after competition a little bit because I had been working so hard for so many months that we needed to give my body a little of a break. So, you know, reintroducing some carbs and some calories, lessening on the workouts, um, just to give my body a little bit of a break. And then we'll probably keep the same structure of that 12 weeks, that 12 weeks of pure focus. Um, but, you know, so I still have a couple weeks left of the alleviated plan until we get right back at it. Now, how did you do any type of cheating meal? And uh, if you didn't, right now that you are on this alleviated period, it's more flexible. Are you doing any cheating meal over the weekends just to keep yourself sane? <laughs> <laughs> just, um, I luckily did have a couple cheat meals. Um, I had a cheat meal about once a week until we were about three or four weeks out from competition and then we quit having cheat meals and about had it once a week and now you know it's an alleviated plan and I wouldn't say I have one cheat meal a week but I also have a little allowance for fun snacks every day that I have about like 200 calorie allowance if I just want to have something off the program I can have that's on the alleviated schedule um, and then you know cheat meals are what they are on this alleviated schedule <laughs> one of the things that i that i always hear uh mainly for young people and you are very young uh, to stay on this very tight routine and, and disciplined routine is y'all are a very active um many times as uh, at this age we have parties over the weekend and everything get together with friends when do you, how do you deal with that? Uh, do you uh, on the weekends you just don't don't control your your nutrition? You relax or you go to the party and still uh, discipline to not consume everything that you see in your in front of you? There is no shame in just drinking water and lemon. If I'm being completely honest, for me. You know, my best friend graduated from college while I was prepping for Miss Illinois USA. I obviously wanted to go and support her, be there for her graduation. Um, and, you know, they wanted to go out and have that social scene. But for me, I had this goal in my mind. And the best of both worlds for me was to go there and, you know, put a little pre-workout in my water instead of having alcohol. Oh, wow, pre-workout. <laughs> so that's what kept me going, was just a little in my water and I would drink that instead of having any sort of alcohol and then as far as meals I came prepared that is the biggest thing that has kept me disciplined for so long is being prepared I knew I was going to be gone for four days so I quite literally packed a cooler full of food for four days drove to Kansas to um, celebrate with her and I put all my food in her fridge and for four days I was eating wow that meal. is amazing that's, but you know, uh, I wasn't. Awesome. I didn't miss out on any of those fun events. I got to walk down the hill with her in the ceremony. I was there for her grad party, her family dinners, the social crowd. 
I was still there for everything and still enjoying everything. It was just a little bit different than a normal scene. And uh, I believe your friends respect a lot of that, right? Or some people say, well, what's going on here? Oh, no. She she is the most supportive person of it. She was. I told her, I was like, hey, by the way, I'm going to have a lot of food in your fridge. She goes, great, I cleared a shelf for you. If it's not <laughs> enough room, we can clear some more room for you. <laughs> nice. So supportive. That's really good. Uh, do, did you always have this mindset? Because you said you were at le an athlete four years ago in college. Uh, at that time, did you ha also have the same approach? Or you feel like you got much better on this? Oh, I'm much better now. When I was an athlete, I didn't really care about my nutrition. I just kind of ate whatever my mom made, and that was what it was. Um, so I didn't have the focus on the nutrition like I do now, and I see how much it impacts you, um, and it impacts your body. And it's something I wish I had cared about more when I was an athlete. And you didn't care because of lack of knowledge or because you really felt it was not necessary? I, you know, that's a pretty tough question. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I, when you're growing up in a small town, you know, sports are life, but you kind of end with sports after high school. And for me, I was a freshman and sophomore in high school. I didn't really care about nutrition. I didn't care about what I ate. You know, my mom still made my food, so it was whatever that it was. And then yeah, I wish I had a better story for you, but I was no, it's living totally at home fine. in high school. No, totally fine. Be transparent, absolutely. And, and because what I think also is when you are younger, you can get by not eating so good because your metabolism is on fire, right? Uh, yeah. And, and with time, you start to realize that uh, food is fuel. And, and you, you, yes. you put good fuel, you feel better. Yeah. Also, I got to give credit to my mom where credit's due. She always made very healthy meals. They were always home-cooked meals. Um, it wasn't ever any processed food. That's one thing that she had when I was growing up. We didn't have processed food. We never had pop in the house. Mm. Um, so it was all very healthy stuff. And it was just what I ate because it's what I knew. Yeah. Now, when it comes to training, uh, did you also feel feel you had an improvement on your approach to training compared to what you used to do when you when you were 18 and 17 an athlete at college um i i think the difference with training is that when you're an athlete someone is there constantly pushing you mm. you have to go to practice you have to go to the weightlifting sessions you have to go to the games That's just how it is. And then there's someone there barking at you the whole time, pushing you to be your best. So the biggest change for training was being that person to push myself. There was no one there anymore to push me during my workouts. Um, so that was honestly the biggest change I had with training was I had to show up for myself every day. Was it hard to be oh, self-disciplined? It was so hard because I'm so used to someone else being there that it was so hard to be self-disciplined. But the biggest thing that helped me was just being disciplined and building the habit. You know, I'm going to go to the end of the gym. I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to do the best I can. And we're going to repeat. So staying with that habit is honestly what helped me the most. Did you ever had situations where you woke up and you just said, no, not today, I'm not going, and and then you skipped that day, but with time you got better on this, or you you stick with the program from day one? I No one's perfect, if I'm being completely <laughs> honest. There's some days you, work up, you wake up and you go, you know, I was up till midnight studying at 6 a.m., I just can't. And I feel like sometimes you do have to listen to your body. If your body is saying, like, I really can't do this today, then maybe take a day off. Um, but if I'm like, mm, maybe I can't lift today, that really, that really hurting me, but I can go for a walk and I can stretch. And it's that recovery of still being active. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes that was my trade-off for me. Yeah. But it was, if I still went to the gym and did the cardio or still did the stretching, I was still in the habit of going to the gym. So tomorrow it was that much easier to go into the gym, get a good workout in. And do you have a gym at home or do you have to actually go physically and drive to the gym? Yeah, I actually have to physically go drive to the gym. And I live out in the country, so it's a nice like 25-minute drive into the into the city just to go to the gym. 
But uh, if you, for some reason, cannot go to the gym, do you have any backup plan to work out at home? Do you have any equipment or anything that you can do at home? I have nothing at home. I mean, I have a farm. <laughs> I could go chop some wood. Um, the other thing is, is I do live on a hill. So I, and it's a pretty steep hill in the Illinois humidity. Sometimes that, that'll really give you a good workout. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, for me, I don't have anything here at the house that I can work out. So if I do go lifting or I do go do a gym workout, I have to go into the gym. So that means that during COVID days where when everything was in lockdown, you were not training at that time i was still during covid i was in college i was living my best little sorority life in living in the sorority house i wasn't anywhere focused on pageants i actually took a break from pageants so for me covid was the break between high school sports and then getting back into pageantry so i didn't do any training during covid and what spark are you to come back to this uh you know type of competition I have always had this goal as being Miss Illinois USA and going to the Miss USA stage. The reason I took a break is because I was at a really weird age where I was 18, which is technically old enough to compete as a Miss, but I wanted to be a more mature Miss. Um, so the teen years helped build up my pageant knowledge, build up my skills, because there's more that goes into pageants than just fitness. I mean, there's interview prep, there's walking prep, your image social media. So teen years really taught me that, but it was all for the goal of going to Miss USA. And so I felt that I was at a time in my life where I could focus on working out the nutrition and everything that went into prepping for Miss Illinois. Wow. So you, you had this goal for a long time. Yes. I've, I've been competing in pageants for, oh gosh, nine years now total with a little, little break little year or two break um, during that COVID time that we talked about. Wow, that's amazing. So this is definitely your best year so far. Oh yeah, we're having a great year. This is everything that I've worked so everything that I've worked for coming back around and it's quite amazing to see it all pay off. Wow, that's outstanding. So you, you just cannot wait for the Miss USA. The, the whole experience will be just fantastic. Yeah, I know. I'm very, very excited. Would love to know when it's going to be so I can really focus on prep. But, you know, going into it, you put so much work into it that when you're at pageant weekend, you can really soak it all in, soak in all your hard work coming to fruition. And so I'm really excited to get to that point and just live in the moment. Yeah, no, and I think it sends a great message uh, to a lot of uh, young adults about self-discipline and uh, goal achievement is 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 super interesting that you have this goal f since you were very young and you you kept working and build upon and and now a lot of things are coming to fruition which is not the result of just the last one year it's the result of many many years right yes many 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 years lots of hard work lots of training going into it what is the, the hardest part for you uh, when it comes to showtime? Uh, you are fully prepared. The work that you're supposed to have done is, is behind you. Is the nerves something that affects you or you are extremely relaxed at this point in time that you've done many times? So it's so funny you bring that up because when I was competing at Miss Illinois, I didn't feel any nerves, which was so unlike me. All the other pageants I had competed in, yes, I'm very well-versed in pageants, but you always got that nerve mm -hmm. going on stage. And this past pageant, I didn't have any of those nerves. I was so calm all week, and I even remember texting people saying, like, they're like, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? I was like, honestly, I feel great. I'm not nervous. I went on stage. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't shaking like I normally shook. Um, so why, why, why is that? Why do you believe this time was so different? I think it's because I've never prepped for a pageant the way I prepped for this pageant. Putting in so much work, you know, having the entire year and a half journey of getting to that point on stage. Um, I think I was just so prepped and worked so hard for it that I was kind of like a breath of relief that I'm there, I can breathe, I can be in the moment, because I have put in all this work. Before, I, 
I would overthink everything like oh you know I I should have worked harder in that one workout or something like that something really small that would make me nervous but in that moment I knew I put in as much work as I could possibly handle um, so I think that really helped calm me down that's a, a great observation because you were so confident that you you did everything that you could that you felt relaxed uh, and that's a, a great lesson learned right because you're going to carry on this for the USA prep yeah that's the hope but that's a real big stage so that might be a whole different case yeah but I think in that moment it'll be more of excitement rather than nerves because it is such a big stage and such a huge goal of mine I think all that emotion is going to be more excitement rather than nerves and usually uh, I have no knowledge on how it works but usually do you have rounds or um, everything is decided on one single day do you have a, is a multiple day type of event yeah so you'll have prelims preliminary competition one day and then you'll have finals one day. So for preliminary, you can be an evening gown swimsuit on stage, and then you'll have your personal interview with the judges. All those scores get combined, and then you go into finals night. And at finals, they make a cut. So then they'll cut however many girls. So for me, it was 38 girls. They cut it down to 15. And so then the scores get wiped, and those 15 girls recompete on finals night in evening and evening gown and swimwear. And then those scores get added up, and then they'll cut it down again. So for me, they cut it down to five. And then, you know, you cut all these girls down to five over two days of competition, and you have your onstage question. The judges decide who they want as their winner, and then there you go. There's your pageant. And then, then the, the announcement is, is on the next day. No, it's that night. It's that night, but on the same yeah. day. Yeah, so it's all so prelims will be one day, and that's a whole scoring of competition. And then when they wipe, they will they'll cut to their semifinalists, and then all those preliminary scores get wiped, and you recompete. Mm -hmm. So you recompete, and all of your scores from that finals show get added together. And at the end of the final show, you're finding out who's winning. So they actually have someone tabulating scores as the competition is going. Wow, it's very nerve wracking because it's so it's like if you survive the first round, you're still not sure what's gonna happen, right? And you yeah, <laughs> and you gotta work just that much harder, you know. You gotta go recompete like your heart depends on it because you never know. I mean, you could have one really great walk up preliminaries and then get on a stage at finals and trip. Like you never know what's gonna happen. Do, uh, do they stack uh, uh, after the first round when they decide the, the top five uh, or they just say these are the top five but there is no order? Yep, yeah, it's, it's completely random order. So nobody in the audience, none of the contestants, none of the judges know what order these girls are in because at the state level for me, the judges actually rank on their scorecard. They have like who they want as their winner, who they want as their first runner-up, second runner-up, third runner-up, fourth runner-up, and we have titles on us. So they'll actually see the top five and they'll rank us on their card how how they would like want us placed. And then each rank is a certain amount of points. The tabulator adds all those ranking points up. And then once the girl is, once they're announcing placements, that's when everybody's finding out together. But as far as top five goes it's completely random when you are on stage um for example on the last round and you see uh, that you are on top five there is uh any type of uh anxiety that goes on that you still have to perform uh stay calm because nothing is decided uh, but at the same time for example you look to your side you see that the, the competition is pretty tough how, how you keep cool you know at, at that time because i think there's a lot of pressure at that time right yeah so when you're in top five it's very very exciting so you're actually i mean when i was called top five i was honored because i competed for four years as a teen and never won so being in top five as a miss i was like oh this is great this is fantastic i'm super excited um but the whole my whole mental strategy going into competing is that you don't compare yourself to the competition mm. 
Because with pageants, every girl is on their own separate journey. And with pageants, you're competing against yourself, trying to become a better version of yourself. So, I mean, obviously the judges are judging us, but for me, standing up there, I wasn't comparing myself to other girls. I was just reflecting on how proud I was of how far I've came. And that's really what helped me stay cool is because in my element, I was the best version of myself and I was so proud of all the work that I had put in. Was this always the approach or in the beginning oh. you were like, oh, I have to win? Oh gosh, when I was a teen, you know how teenage girls are. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was comparing myself to everyone, everything. <laughs> and I think that just shows how much mental growth I had. Yeah. You know, I went from that really insecure teenager comparing myself to everyone to standing there as a miss just so confident and proud of myself that's great and, and that's that's the approach that you are absolutely correct uh and, and that shows uh with your attitudes the level of maturity and and this come with time you you really don't expect a teenager to behave like that of course she's gonna you know compare your, yeah. herself with someone else right yeah i mean you're gonna expect that from teenagers and that's just the part of growth and being a miss contestant but for me i also worked on mental prep. I mean, that was a whole different prep schedule that I had was working to mentally strengthen myself because I had let myself slip so much in college. Being a double major in two honors programs, I wasn't the most mentally sane person because I was working so hard on this one goal and I wasn't taking care of myself. So for me, when I graduated, I was able to step back and breathe and go, okay, what can I do to better my mental health? And, you know, I had a mental health coach that I worked with. And one of the things we worked with was me envisioning myself in that top five. And I was, I told her, I was like, I just don't want to get up there and be really nervous about my on-stage question and like screw up like I did last time. So we worked on envisioning myself up there and envisioning that that question in that bowl was meant for me and it was I was meant to be there and reflecting on all of my past and journaling about it so mental prep was a whole different thing that I did for this pageant that I hadn't had when I was a teenager that's that's make a huge difference so yes. before uh, for for us to close um, I would like to ask you one thing what would be the piece of advice that you would give to the young Samantha uh, if you can look back and, and think about some of your mistakes and now with more maturity you could say don't do this <laughs> oh gosh I mean the biggest piece of advice I'd ever give myself is just to be more open when I was a teenager like we talked about I was so insecure and I wouldn't let anybody into my life I was scared to talk to anybody and so I think that biggest piece of advice would be just be open to all experiences and all opportunities and all people. You know, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to talk to and how they're going to change your life. And, you know, I think that's the biggest prep advice I would have given my younger self. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you very much, Samantha, for sharing all those insights with us. Congratulations again for this amazing achievement. Thank you so much. And good luck uh, on the Miss USA. Uh, with this mindset and with this prep, you're definitely going to be the best version of yourself, for sure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. All right, everyone, that's a wrap for today's episode. Make sure to visit our website, hitagin.net, and stay tuned. We have more to come. Thank you.